The last time we came up with all the equations we need to analyze a general laminate and we're going to work an example here. And before we do that, um, there are a lot of uh, more complex equations here even for a relatively simple problem uh, more than we really want to do by hand. So I've got this uh, spreadsheet uh, general laminate where you enter the layers from top to bottom. One will be the top layer. And as you put in a non-zero thickness here, the layers get numbered uh, automatically. Let me switch over to that real quick. And see the values that we put in here are the example that we worked when we were looking at bending of a symmetric laminate with carbon epoxy skins and a foam core. And by the way, you see down here it lets us know that yes, this uh, is a symmetric and balanced laminate with a uh, moment uh, resultant here of 500 inch pounds per inch. And so for the layer calculations, just like before, uh, we've generated the Q bar matrix, the uh, A uh, terms for the A matrix, the B matrix, and the D matrix. And here on the laminate calculations, here is the ABD matrix. Now again, because this is symmetric, the B matrix, all terms of that are zero. And because it's balanced, we have zeros uh, for the 1, 6, and 2, 6 of the A matrix. So the calculations are made and um, the critical stresses are shown here. And we use the uh, Sai Wu failure criterion to pick out what's the uh, critical stress. Is it at the top or is it the bottom uh, of the layer? And so those are the stresses we came up with uh, before in the carbon epoxy. And uh, because the compression is critical, you can see the factor of safety there of the 3.89. Now, if I were to change this to a tenth of an inch, you notice we, know we no longer have a symmetric laminate. Now, because all the fibers are in the zero direction, it still shows up as balanced. And if we went and looked at the laminate calculations, you'd see now the B matrix is populated uh, because this is a non-symmetric laminate. And so in addition to the curvatures that were calculated for the moment resultant, now there would actually be mid-plane strains because of the bend uh, extension coupling that occurs because of the B matrices. Uh, if you skip on over here, and here's the materials page, very similar to uh, the symmetric laminate uh, properties. Uh, in fact, all the same are off of the uh, summary pages. And here we plotted the stress in the X direction as a function of the distance below the midplane. So here you can see the uh, um, carbon epoxy skins, of course, have much higher stress and the um, foam core has essentially uh, a zero stress and in this case again we've got a thicker uh, layer on the top than we do on the bottom and as you can see by doing that it's, it's again it's no longer symmetric but because of the fact that the uh, compressive side is critical by thickening that up we were able to increase the factor of safety of the entire uh, laminate so Let's go back to the example problem we wanted to look at. Just wanted to show you where all the numbers are coming from. But here's the example. We've got two laminates, and both of them are just made up of carbon epoxy. Keep it simple, zeros and 90s. And notice uh, both of them are a total of 2 tenths of an inch, it's going to be 20 thousandths of an inch thick, uh, equally between zeros and 90s. But on the left, the zeros are on top of the 90s, so it's non-symmetric. And on the right, we'll call it laminate B, uh, it is symmetric. We split the zeros to be top and bottom and put the 90s in the middle. So for the non-symmetric one, here's what the ABD matrix comes out to be. And again, I don't show units on that because they're different. In the A matrix, these are pounds per inch. These units are pound. These units in the D matrix are inch pounds. But you can see non-symmetric means we do have some uh, properties here in the uh, in the B matrix. So when we calculate the midplane strains and curvatures, again we notice that there is curvature here, even though we're only putting a uh, force in the x direction. In other words, it's an in-plane force that causes bending. And so if we look in the stress in the x direction, um, we can see again, because we have the bending, it varies from top to bottom of the layer. So here's for the zero degree layer. 
and here below the midplane is the um, 90 degree layer and you can see the maximum stress that occurs in the zero is 23,000 psi. Now for comparison let's now look at the symmetric laminate B and if you take a look at these values here and compare them you'll see that the uh, A matrix is exactly the same because as we remember when we looked at the A matrix we said it doesn't matter where the locations are or excuse me, where the layers are located, it's only the thicknesses that add up in the A matrix. But now the B matrix is completely zero. And so as we did with our example, we could have analyzed this separately uh, for uh, both the in-plane and bending. Because in this case, if we only put ints of X on there, we really could analyze this with our symmetric, um, la symmetric laminate uh, spreadsheet and get the same results. So when we look at the midplane strains and curvatures, of course we find out that the curvatures are zero because, uh, again, no uh, bend extension coupling in this uh, in this symmetric laminate. And so when we look at the stresses in the x direction, notice that the maximum stress is much lower. It's 9,000 and some psi in the zeros. Uh, of course, much lower in the 90 degree because the stiffness is that much lower. And you see no bending. You see just the flat, um, flat profiles of the stresses. The stresses are constant within each layer. So just looking at them side by side, you can see again, non-symmetric, we end up with this bending uh, in here. Symmetric, stresses are constant and of course uh, much lower. So that's just kind of a brief introduction and um, to the general laminate uh, analysis and we'll do a couple more examples in the next video including one that has temperature change.